Let's talk about some electrical theory for a minute. There's two facts about electricity. One, electricity wants to complete a circuit. And two, it will always take the path of least resistance. Now let's watch a short video explaining some of the basic electrical terms as compared to hydraulic terms. All right, today we're going to be talking about how electrical properties can be compared to hydraulic properties, or simply put, Ohm's law in a firefighter friendly fashion. There's three different electrical properties that we're going to compare to water properties. The first one is voltage, and that's measuring the amount of volts that are in the electrical system. Or in our case, what's the pressure in the hose line? PSI. So PSI equals voltage. Next one is current. Current is measuring the amount of electrons actually flowing through the electrical system, and that's measured in amps. In our case, it's the gallons per minute. So when you open the bale and the water's flowing, that's the same as the current flowing. The last one is resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms, and it refers to the resistance to electrical flow. In water terminology, we would look at that as the friction loss in the hose line. Here we have an inch and a half hose line. If we were to take the same amount of water and put it through a garden hose, you'd have much higher friction loss. Equally, if we put the same amount of water through a five inch hose, you'd have much less friction loss. With current, if you look at an electrical outlet in a wall, there's no current flowing until an appliance is plugged in and turned on. We're often told that current kills. Our bodies have a certain amount of resistance depending how wet we are, or if you're standing in water, or what kind of protective equipment you have. If you think about a garden hose that might be flowing two or three gallons a minute, most people wouldn't think that that's a large enough amount of water flow or current, if we make that comparison, to do much damage. But if you take that garden hose and increase that pressure up to 12 to 1500 PSI, similar to what a pressure washer does, you can now see how that two or three gallons per minute can become very dangerous. That's the same with the electricity. If you increase the voltage, it has a higher likelihood of overcoming the resistance in your body and getting that current through you. So once again, the pressure in the hose line, PSI, is the same as the voltage. The gallons per minute is the same as current or amps. And friction loss or resistance is the same as ohms in an electrical system. As you can see, it takes not only voltage to experience a shock, but also low resistance. Then, if there's enough voltage to overcome the resistance, it's now all up to how much current is in the circuit to determine the degree of shock you'll get. Imagine a car battery with a wire connected from the positive terminal to a light bulb and then back to the negative terminal. If the wire were uninsulated and you touched the bare wire, would you get shocked? No, you wouldn't, because the wire is already completing a circuit and you're not part of it. And it's also taking the path of least resistance. Now, imagine that same circuit, but now there's a break in the wires. If you touched one of the wire, would you get shocked? No, because the electricity wants to complete a circuit, and by only touching one wire, you're not completing it. But if you touch both ends of the broken wires, you will have completed the circuit. Now, again, getting shocked all depends on how much voltage and current is present in that battery. Let's talk about a very high voltage shock that very likely each of you has experienced, a static shock. Now some of you may be saying there isn't much voltage in a little static shock, but you'll be surprised to hear that a simple static shock can be two to 5,000 volts DC. The reason we're all still here is that it's also a very small amount of current, usually less than five milliamps. Likewise, think about the 12 volt car battery. Not much voltage, and most people can touch both terminals without feeling a shock due to the resistance of dry skin. But if your hands were wet, you might. So then how much current is available in a car battery? You could get over a thousand amps of current when you short circuit a car battery. That would very likely hurt quite a bit. Now if we use instead of a 12 volt car battery, a 400 volt battery, do you think you could touch both terminals without getting shocked? No, that would most definitely overcome the resistance of dry skin and deliver a potentially lethal shock.